in there. If only we could make SharePoint announcements lists look like this, or maybe other kinds of lists with other kinds of custom markup. Well, actually, you can, and you've been able to do it since WSS version 2, but the process, take it from me, is kind of tedious. Well, I'm going to show you a new process using uh, the Magic Data View Builder that I just finished creating a little while ago. I won't say finished, really. It's sort of a living, working builder tool thingy. I'm going to keep making changes to it based on the feedback that I get from this post. But here is the Magic Data View Builder in action. All you have to do is upload an XSL file that you can download from the blog post to your SharePoint sites. And that's what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to go into a library I've already created here called XSL. And I'll go into that library and add a new document to that library. And I'll browse to the SharePoint Experts Magic Data View Builder that I've created. It's open just a little bit in my other window there, just so you can't see where the, all the magic is happening. So we'll get the Magic Data View Web Part Builder. And there it is. I know, it's stunning. Nice little gear icon and everything. And that's not what it really does. It's not just going to sit in there and taunt you with its lack of extension on the file. Now this is used to create custom views of your lists using only your browser. No SharePoint designer necessary. First we need a list though. We need to figure out what list we're going to do. Uh, based on the HTML that I have, let's do the announcements list. So I'm going to go ahead and edit my page and then add an announcements list to the site. And there's my announcements list. Now I need to choose the columns that I want to have on my display. So I'm going to go ahead and modify this web part and change the view. I don't care for attachments and all that stuff. You know what? I, I, want, I want the body, the date that it was created and who created it, the name of the announcement itself. That's the actual title of the announcement. And that's all I had in my sample code, so that's that's good enough for me. I'll go ahead and select OK. And we see what SharePoint gives us out of the box here. Pretty standard vanilla SharePoint XSLT list view web part. Now, I already have that XSL file uploaded over here. Now what I'm going to do is copy the URL to this file to my clipboard just to make my life easy. And back on my home page, I'm going to go back and to modify the properties of that web part. In the miscellaneous group, you'll find the XSL link field. Now, it might be kind of weird for you to see XSL link and data view caching and data view caching timeout on the XSLT list view web part that comes with SharePoint, but the XSLT list view web part actually inherits from the data view web part or technically data form web part that we all know and love. So all the functionality that we had available to us in the standard data view, we also have available to us in the XSLT list view. The only difference is how much XSL gets preloaded into it. That's the main difference. There are a few other subtle differences, but the primary difference is that uh, a large volume of XSL templates are normally attached to an XSLT list view web part that take care of automatically formatting the list no matter which columns you have displayed. And Microsoft actually has a patent pending on this technology that they've created. So in an effort to avoid having to mess with their patents, uh, we're just going to use my own code here. So here comes the Magic Data View Builder and select OK. Now when the page comes up, you can see now on the screen the Magic Data View Builder. I know, so exciting. It's been created for my announcements list, a nice little description to remind you of what list you're on. And we can just edit the file right here in the browser. I'm using the Code Mirror library to create a code editor right here in the browser. I'm using the Downloadify extension to actually download the file that you create. Let's see what happens if I scroll down a little more. Oh, oh, look at that. All of the fields that are visible inside this view are presented here for your pleasure. And you can see not only the internal name and display name if there is one for that field. For example, the internal name is author, but the display name is created by. But you can also see what type of field it is, what XSL code would be necessary to show that value in line in your content, and what XSL code would be necessary to use it in an attribute of an existing element. 
And finally, below each sample, it gives you a, a demonstration of what a live field looks like for the first record. So you can see here, I'm a second announcement. Neat, huh? Now you might notice the big green plus buttons next to either one of them. Obviously, this doesn't look as beautiful as it could. It's a beta, alpha, pre-beta something. Uh, let's see how we can make this work, though. Uh, based on the code that I had before, I had a, a wrapper. There's an M&M &M joke in there somewhere. But I had a wrapper that I'm going to wrap around my list of announcements, and that wrapper was... Uh, well, actually, I didn't have a wrapper. I just had my repeating section for the announcements themselves. So we'll go ahead and keep the div wrapper. But you see here in this template, I have two different sections. This wrapper or container for my custom view, which is just a div there and a closing div element there. And this line on line 11, XSL apply templates, that tells the view, well, once you've opened my wrapper container here, go look for something else to do. And when you're done, come back here and close that div container. So it goes out to find something to do. What does it find? It finds rows. And this is the same for every SharePoint list library that might connect to. There's always going to be an XSL element called row with a bunch of attributes coming after it. Now this example that it comes with, this XSL actually works for any list because any list in SharePoint has an ID field and a title field, whether you like it or not. So this technically would work. It would create a div for every single one of my announcements with a unique ID on that div, list item dash, and then the ID number for the announcement. And inside that div, it would show the title of the announcement. Well, I don't want any of that, so I'm gonna get rid of it. Instead, for my sample that I had before, this is going to be an article element that's gonna be the repeating content, and then the header, and then an H2 element, and that's going to contain the title of my announcement. I'll just scroll down here to find the title. Again, you see that uh, because this has an apostrophe or other special characters, uh, it's smart enough to know I should disable the output escaping whenever I insert it. Uh, this goes for uh, multi-line text fields and things like that as well. So I just click that plus button and look at that. It actually added the code up there for me. I mean, it's, it is kind of like magic. And then I have a paragraph tag created on, and then I have the created on date. So again, I just scroll down to find the one that I want. The date time field looks like that right there. So I'm going to go ahead and click created by, and then I'm going to grab the author name. Now SharePoint actually gives you different versions of the author. I'm going to use the author.title. Anytime inside of the field name you see a dot something, it's a different render pattern, a different method of displaying the information that you've already had. Uh, maybe you remember in the past uh, render patterns being used in camel style views. This is sort of the analog to it that they've created for XSL style views. If it has a period followed by something, it's a different way of formatting the existing field, not actually new data. I'm going to go ahead and do the author title. And there you can see by author title. So I'll close my paragraph tag. And then I wanted to have a div And that's where the content is going to go. Uh, but I also need to close my header tag. So just before that div. Again, nice little auto indenting it did there. And then I'm going to show the body of my announcement. And there it is right. Oh, I went right past it. It's going to be right up here. There's body. Bam, there it is. and then close the article. I can see that I don't have any more bright red code on my page, so it seems like it's going to be a functioning view. I'll just back up a little bit, maybe clean it up a little bit. So far, so good. Now I'm just going to save it. You don't even have to copy and paste. You just click the Download XSL button and save the file. By default, it's called the Magic Data View Web Part, magic dvwp.xsl. I'll go ahead and save that file. And back in our XSL document library, the one that I created before, I'm going to go ahead and upload that file. And there it is. And copy the URL to my clipboard. 
And just like I did when I added the magic data view template, I'm going to modify the properties, go to the miscellaneous group, and paste in that new URL. And now I get my new markup. Now, I know what you're thinking, uh, Dustin, how do I know that's really the markup that you wanted? Well, I'm glad you said something. I'm going to go ahead and inspect the element here with Firebug. And you can see. In fact, I'll go ahead and copy the whole thing into my window over here. And there it is, folks, the magic data view web part builder. I hope you enjoyed. Please give it a try. Let me know in the comments what you think. Let me know if it sucks. Let me know if it rocks. Let me know if there's something else that you want it to do, because I intend to do a lot with it. Thanks for spending the time, and don't forget to comment on the blog post. See ya.